welcome back to TW 2016, The Branding Solution. And we are here on Shockwave, and we're three weeks away from Money in the Bank. We know who's in Money in the Bank on this show. We know most of the matches, and at the moment we're building up to Money in the Bank and Battleground, I think it is. I keep forgetting. I don't want to look to some spoilers. But, yeah, we're toying with our pre-show again. We've probably gone... 90 minutes pre-show and two and a half hours again so I am liking the new freedom I have we have Ruben Vidal and Phoenix picking up a win Vidal is up to 36 performance considering this is his rookie year I'm really impressed so I may be you, I, I say every show but I'm seriously considering post summer slam calling him up Uh, Mark Henry picked up a win. I think fancy. Simple enough. Uh, the special edition beat TM61. They're both all rated the same, which I'm really impressed with. I gave them a slightly longer match than my normal pre-show, hence why I'm taking away the time restrictions. I can give people longer matches. Um, Bubba Ray is now in NXT as a trainer, but I can call him up for the shows. So I'm going to use him to just push some talent. And me. Fandango picked up, picked up a win over Baba. Another mix of tag teams. A couple of them are actually real tag teams. We have the Heart Dynasty and the Uprising. But Charlie Garrett and Neville pick up a win. Neville is one of the elite on my game. For the Cruiserweight division. I am looking to turn him hill. Uh, it's a slow build for this one. I thought I'd try Mojo and Shelton Benjamin together. Not the best outcome, never mind. Oblivion Max defeated Rhino in a 72. Well, that was impressive. Um, yes, Oblivion Max doesn't have a moment on the show tonight. But still, Rhino, good for training, good for putting people over. It's a good rating. We then had the Vaughan Villains pick up a win. As you can see, they're both coming along nicely as well. So my tag division on this show feels a lot better ratings-wise than the one on Raw. That's why I need to build the Raw one up a bit more. And we have Samoa Joe, victory over Cheeseburger, who continues to improve. If he gets called up, he is not going to be called Cheeseburger. And we did a free of free sort of match. We had the European Invasion defeat um, my NXT trio and I also had Gallagher, Killian Dane and Marty Skull. As you can see they're all pretty similar rated so it's just giving them a match. I gave Atami the squash match over Alan Young this week. Alan Young did improve which is good and bad. And we gave the Revival a win. See, they're also in the 50s, so... That's, the fucks seem to have affected all of my tag teams. Making them all better. And the Briscoes, of course. And I went for a big main event as such. And the pre-show had Cody Rhodes defeat Sheamus. So I thought, yeah, 79. Great rating to start. And the pre-show. Which then probably brings us to a good segment. I was expecting slightly better. Cena, Punk and Austin Aries all come out, state their case to why they will go on to win at their next pay-per-views. Um, none of them, uh, Austin Aries is placing Rusev, but there is a chance it's going to be like John Cena and Punk. Maybe AJ Styles versus Sandow Joe and somebody else. Well, AJ will be on their side. I'm looking to just do a big tag team match on the main camp of Money in the Bank rather than Punk, Joe, Sandow, Cena. I'm saving that for their next pay-per-view. Um, we jump into the King of the Ring qualifiers where Bad News Barrett defeated that Sabre Jr. Good rating match. Um, the rest of the European Invasion were not allowed to interfere in this match. But afterwards, they decide to interfere 
which they are allowed to, William Regal distracts Barrett as the full four on one attack happens. Yep, so Kelly and Dana Mice go should get a little bump off that too. Um, I gave the club a victory leading up to their tag team title match. See, they're improving. The Dragons are great, or great, or better than they. So, yeah, the club pick up an easy win. Which then leads to a promo with the Briscoes and the club. Just pumping their match for the tag team titles. Um, these promos seem to get better ratings. <coughs> so, I feel this is what we need to do. Don't need to go through what gets said there either. In a what seems like a poor match, like Zack Ryder and Blake, 46ers. Um, Blake wins. During the match, Tyler Bridge tried to distract Blake, but while that was happening, Cody Rhodes hit Zack Ryder, knocking him out. But Blake there and hit the finisher. And after the match, Cody Rhodes just sort of carries Blake, oh, carries, yeah, carries Blake back. Out of the ring with Tyler Breeze and Zack Ryder, both looking furious. And they sort of cut a promo saying, Remember, This is what it'll be like when you cannot get involved in my business, Tyler. You will be winning. And if I join you, I'm going to break you from the inside. Tyler Breeze not happy. But still, in 89, these two are great. It might work. Now, I gave Austin Aries a big victory against. One of the better hills where he beats Cesaro. The reason for this is I want him, as I said, I want him to get to nearer the 70s by Money in the Bank. So we're getting closer to it than I thought. Um, Cesaro can have a defeat. He's not in a major storyline at the moment, so everything worked out nicely. We jump into the segment where Shane McMahon announces that Brian Kendrick is no longer with the company. That leaves a big gap in the King of the Ring tournament. Brian Kendrick had a bye in the first round. So he introduces Leo Rush as the newest member of the Shockwave pay-per-view, or brand, and he will be taking Brian Kendrick's place in the King of the Ring. And yeah, so he comes out, gets an introduction. He's the best of the best, best of my best attempt at a picture. It's not actually as bad as some of the others I've done. I wanted to do just a yellow background for some. It's a lot of effort. That's the only thing I have for Leo Rush. Didn't have a picture on the game. We move into a tag team match now where Nakamura and Will Ospreay defeat Okada and Mystico. And this moves US title along. I thought Mystico was in. No crucial weight storyline. He must not be. He's a bit of a bugger. But still. Nakamura and Okada look great. I've got Nakamura at the 80s. But we're lucky we did this because Omega comes out and attacks Will Ospreay. Um, sending a point that he won't be taking his cruiserweight to home. Therefore we're sort of backstage. And Tozer and Ricochet walk up to him. And sort of ask him how he's doing. When's he going to get another shot? And Neville sort of acts very heelish. That's pretty much what we're doing. He just sort of doesn't want to talk to them and just tells them to leave him alone and walks off. And another King of the Ring, Damien Sandow defeats TJ Perkins. Yeah, I couldn't do the surprise victory here with any sort of distraction. It had to end that way. But after the match, Damien Sandow carries on the beat now. And John Cena's music hits, and Sandow scampers through the crowd before getting too involved. Um, Jake Evans has been really struggling for momentum, so I gave him a TV victory over Colvin Carino. It, they're great against each other, which is good. Um, it brought the crowd down, which was the plan. At a solid 54, I'm not going to complain. AJ Styles is in the ring, and he calls out Adam Cole and says, well, you need to go and win some silly little briefcase to be in title matches. I am a title match. And you can bring out all the other guys, like Sammy and Bobby. They're all 
just looking for a cheap way to win a title. They're not as good as me, they're not as good as the champion, and they never will be. And this leads to them all coming out, slamming AJ Styles, saying they're going to win money in the bank. And a bit of a brawl, and that ends up in a tag team main event. With Adam Cole and Sami Zayn defeating AJ Styles and Bobby Roode when Bobby Roode got pinned by Sami Zayn. Um, yeah, it was a smart choice, I feel. Bobby Roode, I believe, has declining physical ability too. Well, that's only AJ. I didn't want AJ pinned. He's not really ready to be pinned. You can see it by the ratings. They're all quality. And 83. Happy with that. And afterwards, the whole of the Money in the Bank lot come out. Sammy Zayn's kind of set up a ladder. He's climbing the ladder. And they're all the rest come out and try and have a little bit of a brawl. Nobody's really standing tall. But the ladder is left hanging below the briefcase in the middle of the ring. And I chose to end the show with that. Something different than just bumping the main event as in there. So we should get a mid-80s again, as I imagine. Uh, my 84. Right, that'll do. We Again, we didn't use too many of the big names on the show in matches, which is the thing I'm trying not to do. That was probably the Unicar matches. Nobody's Mid carders, mid carders. After here's main event, upper card, mid carders, mid carders. And that's bad news, it's probably main event, but against the mid carder. So get an 84 for a show that has no match for Cena, Punk, Rusev, Joe. And you, it's brilliant. I'm really happy with that. So we'll head back to the main screen and check some news. And we are now back the main show. Uh, let's check some news. Anything important on uh, Brian Kendrick's got another job. It's good to see. He took two or three jobs since I fired him. I only fired him for failing drugs tests. That's the main reason. He was either going to be constantly in rehab or constantly failing drugs tests. And I couldn't have that anymore. Okay, no thing to worry about there. The news was boring, just the same guy wanted to get called up, and he ain't getting called up because I don't have a spot for him anywhere. The storylines, oh, shockwave. Ooh, 72. That was just constantly good for the promo work. The Cruiserweights, let's just add Mystico in there because I keep using him because he's my only, like, other hill. Um. The Money in the Bank one's doing pretty well. I I could put Cody and Tyler in there, but their storyline's doing so well. And I have Adam Cole in the Respect storyline. So yeah, an 84, an 85. Ethan Brewer, my career, is doing great. The tag title's brilliant. The world title, 94. And that's, looking at that, it's Austin Aries versus Rusev. That's mainly all segments. They haven't really fought each other. That's the only time they fought in a tag match. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. This is kind of just a throw together one. It's not important. And that's solid even for the US. For the creative meetings, we can check other bits and pieces. Who is hot? Austin Aries, number one. That's great to see when he's going into a world title picture. Or a match. Otherwise... Sean Benjamin's now there. I believe that win for Jake Evans got him off the list. Have, let's just check. So that's our pay-per-view at the moment. There's not the greatest. There will be a couple of additions. I may put some of the Intercontinental qualifiers on there because I want the Miss or Dolph Ziggler to face the winner at Money in the Bank. Smackdown, yeah. Shockwave is the Great American Bash. Shockwave is... Smackdown is the background. Shockwave is the Great American Bash, yeah. And I'm tired of building both of them up to do both shows. Both are probably just going to have their main talent in a tag match. Just to keep the rivalries and the storyline going. Because there's just too many little storylines going on each show. As you can see from my storylines, if I had one-on-one -on -one matches, 
all of these, we would have a lot of matches on the pay-per-view. But if you break it down to the singles, like SmackDown, one, two, three, you'd have nine matches, say. On a pay-per-view, it's pretty tidy. Same with Shockwave, maybe 11. Raw will start getting broken up a bit more. I say the storyline is kind of cheating, like Jay Lethal, Swagger, Corbin, are all out of that already. And I'm sort of doing a Baron Corbin Swagger storyline. Chris Jericho is actually probably going to come out of that. But he's leaving in a couple of days, so it's not too worried. The Perfect Ten, again, just a little, little storyline, probably until this pay-per-view and it'll finish. Powerhouse is just my tag team pushing, Money in the Bank style. TV titles, only one-on-one -on -one at the moment between Jinder and Alex Riley. The rest of the contenders, maybe, depending on who I go with to win. And then this is smart, keeping Brock in this, because he will still want title matches. Won't be getting one for a while. Keeping those two one-on-one. -on -one. And the tag titles, so, yeah. Everything's quite smooth. We'll be back for Backlash next episode. So, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.